Hello, everybody, and uh, thank you for joining uh, this uh, webinar today. Um, I will uh, share some uh, of the slides, and uh, a recording and a PowerPoint will be sent via email link, and uh, they will be available on our website. So today's webinar is about uh, omega-3 fish oils, trends and opportunities for products certified sustainable. And the uh, next uh, webinar will be on the 26th of February, 2020 at 3 p.m. Central European time. Uh, and it's gonna be about whale and dolphin watching, the importance of sustainability certification to regulate the industry. Today's guest uh, is uh, Mr. Niyan Kang, the director of uh, KD Pharma. And uh, just a few words about who we are, the World Sustainability Organization uh, started uh, from over 30 years experience on the Dolphin Say project, a precursor of all sustainable fishery certification standards. Friend of the Sea is now a project of the World Sustainability Organization. It is the only standard which with the same seal of approval can potentially certify both uh, uh, major seafood origins, fisheries and aquaculture. In 2016, the WSO has launched a parallel project, Friend of the Earth, for the certification of products from sustainable agriculture and farming. Over 1,000 companies in more than 70 countries have products certified by these standards. Well, omega-3 can uh, originate in different forms from walnuts, seeds, algal oil, flax seed. The sources of animal omega-3, IPA and DHA fatty acids, include fish and fish oils. While uh, our organization has uh, also requirements for the certification of uh, products from agriculture, and it has started to certify uh, some nutraceutical products from uh, this origin, the focus until now has been on uh, omega-3 fish oils. This comes mainly from uh, anchovies and uh, sardines, uh, mainly fished in uh, the southern eastern Pacific, but also the central Atlantic, central eastern Atlantic, Manhattan, some krill, but also increasingly from trimmings or bycats of, uh, for example, tuna, salmon, and cod liver. As you can see, the percentage of these bycats as components of fish oil and fish meal has increased a lot since 2000 to become almost 50% of the total. This is a positive development in view of a more circular economy. The major fish oil producing countries are Peru, Chile, USA, Morocco, with some major refineries and distributors in Europe, USA, Australia, and Asia. Let's have a quick look at the status of the major fish oil fisheries. The Peruvian and Chilean fisheries, after a collapse of the stocks in the 70s through the 80s, have managed to greatly improve their management and they are currently considered among the best managed worldwide, having adopted the science-based quotas, precautionary limits, uh, which have maintained the stocks well within the maximum sustainable yield. The fishing gears do not impact the seabed and have very little bycatch. Companies have also implemented measures to reduce the impact of their plants, implemented social accountability, and promoted the creation of marine protected areas to reduce impact on uh, seabirds, for example. The Manhattan fishery is the major fishery fish oil fishery in North America, one of the major fisheries in the Western Atlantic, Northwestern Atlantic. And basically it has no bycatch, it's very selective, no impact on seabed, and catches have been reduced over the years as uh, fishing areas have been also limited by US laws. 
The CREO fishery can also be considered as a sustainable fishery. It is managed by the most recent RFMO, the CCA MLR, which is considered as one of the best ones around. And it has implemented, among the others, an ecosystem-based management, precautionary principles, 50% target observers on board, and uh, only 0.06% of biomass is harvested and uh, less than 5% of the catch is used for fish oil. TEDs, trawler exclusive devices are mandatory and the fishery has no impact on the seabed and no bycatch of marine birds. Well, uh, over 500 companies from 50 countries worldwide, including five krill uh, vessels among the others and 15 krill omega-3 distributors have omega-3 certified uh, products as friend of the sea. Consequently, friend of the sea is considered as a leading standard in omega-3 sustainability certification. It is the only certification of this kind which is recognized by the national accreditation bodies. And it, its requirements include uh, social accountability and uh, energy efficiency. Now I will uh, uh, pass the microphone uh, to Mr. Kang, director of uh, um, KD Pharma. Uh, thank you very much, Paolo. My name is uh, Neyang Kang. I'm a business development director uh, at the KD Nutra in charge of uh, Europe, Middle East, Asia, uh, Africa, and Asia Pacific. So uh, today I'd like to talk about global omega-3 market trends and opportunities focusing on sustainability aspects. So uh, let's look at the uh, uh, consumer insights regarding health and well-being trend. So it's uh, uh, the survey done by Next Data in 19, uh, 2019. So uh, Y axis represent purchase intention means I will buy it. And X axis represent market prediction. I believe others will buy more of it. So interesting enough is a uh, first one. I will buy it or and others buy, buy it is a uh, waste reduction rank number one. And number two is the sourcing, sourcing responsibly. And number three, regenerative agriculture. So uh, top three are all related to sustainability. So it's quite interesting result in the health and well-being also category. Uh, so here, and it is another statistics. So it's a, um, Vita Foods is the largest uh, health ingredient and the supplement show in uh, Europe. And it's a stati uh, statistics from the participants. So 2019, top 15 uh, ingredients by visitors' interest. As you can see here, plant extracts and algae and omegas vegetable derived is much higher than marine source. That means more vegan related products, people have interest in uh, omega area as well. And also top 15 finished products by visitor interest in 2019, liquid supplement ranked number six, uh, number five, but 2018, it was number six. That means uh, more and more liquid supplements people have interest. So I, I, I will explain why. So also in the States, uh, MBJ Summit 2019 uh, announced this data. 2013, people taking supplement with a pill type is a 63%, but 2018 is uh, only 51% is taking pills. So that means other non-pill like liquid or emulsion has been increased. Also gummies has been increased significantly. So uh, the overall market trend in dietary supplement is no more pills. So uh, in the omega-3 industry, as you can see, there are several uh, condition-specific uh, concentration can be made. So 
DH, higher DHA than EPA, then this kind of uh, omega-3 supplement can help for eye health and the brain health and the infant health. And the EPA and DHA equally important for immunity and the mood health. And the higher EPA supplement is good for inflammation and the heart health. So it can give uh, uh, several benefits across a lifespan. So uh, let's look at uh, a new product recently launched in the market globally. So there are several new products and these three products are claiming highly concentrated uh, super strength fish oil. That means omega-3 EPA DHA content is uh, over 80%. So they are claiming that. And these products are claiming vegan. And in the middle, these three is a combination, omega-3 combination product. Omega-3 with uh, alpha GPC, omega-3 with the CBD, omega-3 is a curcumin. And these three Smarty Pants and Scotch Emulsion uh, products is uh, gummies, so alternative delivery format. And these four is eye health product. And these two product is uh, Beauty From Within. And these liquid bottles, yeah, represent a liquid supplement in omega-3. And omega Life 3 Resolve uh, represents like novel omega-3 ingredients such as um, resolvents or resolving mediators. So we selected uh, top three marketing trend in omega-3. First one is sustainability. Second one is uh, vegan omega-3. And third one, omega-3 combination product. So, so then the what's the sustainability, meaning of sustainability, maybe you guys heard of uh, triple bottom line. So uh, according to Food and Agriculture Organization of United Nations, they have this diagram showing developing sustainable food value chain. So triple bottom line is a profit um, and the people and the planet so companies can develop this kind of sustainable uh, food value chain uh, <clears throat> touching this social accountability and the environmental sustainability and uh, also uh, uh, economic sustainability. So this overlapping area can be sustainability. So uh, many people think about only environmental aspects uh, when you talk about sustainability, but uh, social aspects are very important. So FO, FOS certification also uh, take care of a uh, uh, social aspect of sustainability. So I think um, you need to consider that aspects as well. So this is uh, another uh, market example. So WHC Uno Cardio 1000 is uh, the company based in Belgium and they're, they're claiming cold and environmental friendly technology and the Friends of the Sea certified. And this product is getting popularity in, uh, in the States and in Europe as well. And, and this company Norsan is located in Germany and uh, they are saying also uh, they're FOS certified, Friends of the Sea. So they're saying their oil is sustainable, fish oil product is sustainable than others, and uh, it can be uh, proved by uh, Friends of the Sea certification. So also KD Pharma Group, uh, we are promoting uh, Friends of the Sea through our website. So uh, most of our KD Pharma products are Friends of C certified. So uh, when people think about fish oil, then the, some people uh, mix with uh, omega-3. When we talk about uh, crude fish oil, then the only 30% of uh, crude fish oil is uh, omega-3. Then what 
is other 70% is uh, actually undesired fat. So then the how can you test whether you have omega uh, suitable omega-3 inside your body there is a uh, omega-3 index test it's a blood test uh, measuring EPA and DHA level in your body so if the omega-3 index is below 4 then uh, your omega-3 is uh, content is not good enough and 4 to 8 percent is intermediate and over 8 percent is desirable so uh, majority of uh, US population is uh, below 4 actually then uh, how can we increase omega-3 index it's a very important question then the people can eat the fish or taking supplements or other uh, plant uh, foods you can take so this is a very interesting uh, graph published uh, last year August so let's say your omega-3 index level is 4 and uh, you want to increase it to 8. 8 is over 8 is optimum level. So uh, within 13 weeks, then if you're taking fish oil supplement as a, as a form of TG, then you need to take 1,500 EPA and DHA every day, 13 weeks, then you can increase omega-3 index from 4 to 8. So if you take the normal fish oil containing EPA, DHA, 300 milligrams, that, that means uh, you need to take uh, five capsules per day. But if you're taking high concentrated fish oil, for example, EPA, DHA, 800 milligrams, then uh, you take only two capsules per day. Then you can reach optimal level after 13 weeks. So. That's uh, one of the reasons a lot of companies want to have, uh, want to use high concentrate fish oil. So it also can be sustainable because uh, the number of capsules are small, so it can uh, save this transportation cost and the packaging cost as well. Yeah, and the number uh, trend number two is a vegan omega three. So here is uh, they're claiming. Um, vegan from uh, algae oil and the uh, uh, first product is uh, from sea uh, buckthorn oil and the third product is ahi flower oil so uh, people a lot of people think about flaxseed oil yeah but uh, these kind of uh, new products have been launched and they're different from uh, flaxseed so for example ahi flower oil they're claiming uh, four times better absorbed than the flaxseed oil based on the clinical trial. And uh, it has a special uh, omega-3 called uh, SDA, yeah. So uh, I think in Europe, the largest omega-3 and fish oil uh, supplement market is uh, U United Kingdom and um, uh, there is an organic uh, store chain called Whole Foods Market. So Whole Foods Market is a U.S. chain, but they have uh, chains also in uh, London. So they have a designated uh, refrigerator for essential fatty acids. That means uh, here is uh, omega-3 and the other uh, plant-based plant oil. But you, as you can see, a lot of uh, liquid products already there. So liquid uh, omega-3 is uh, quite trend. And uh, another uh, trend is omega-3 combination product. So Energy is uh, the company located in Italy and the Energona is a uh, top um, omega-3 brand in Italy. And they recently launched this combination product uh, targeting young women and the, uh, based on the different uh, health benefits, skin, vitality, and focus. And the Centrum launched also a multivitamin with the omega-3 for women and the men. And uh, yeah, so also WHC launched the uh, cardio sports uh, targeting uh, young active adults. So it's a combination of omega-3 with uh, actual membrane for joint health. Yeah, so uh, 
that was a uh, uh, brief introduction and of uh, global marketing uh, trend of Omega three, and uh, our company KD Pharma Group is uh, the largest Omega three pharma producer worldwide, and the first and only uh, fully integrated uh, nutraceutical supplier worldwide. And uh, we have vision improving human health globally with the sustainable innovation in health product solutions and services. And uh, we are purchasing actually over uh, 3,000 tons of fish oil. And uh, our major requirements are the FOS certified. So we are buying a uh, majority of our products are uh, FOS certified uh, products. So we want to help uh, FOS or uh, other companies uh, sell the more sustainable products uh, in the market. Yeah, so that's it. Thank you very much, Mr. Kang. I hope uh, everybody can hear me. I'll double check internally. Can you hear me, Mr. Kang? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Okay, great. So I suppose everybody else can hear me. And uh, <clears throat> thank you very much for your very interesting uh, presentation and uh, I will now have a look at the results of the poll that we launched. Uh, I will share them with the attendees. So currently 76% um, of the attendees uh, answered the, that uh, that they would need to see a certification on the uh, omega-3 fish or krill oils uh, for sustainability in order to perceive it as really sustainable and then 16% uh, and that's interesting would not perceive omega-3 as a sustainable and 8% uh, would consider it uh, always as sustainable but thank you very much for uh, participating to this poll and uh, <clears throat> we have here some uh, already received some uh, questions so I will go through them uh, and um, uh, well, quite a lot of questions, uh, so uh, let's go quickly through them. Uh, um, do, we have a question which goes, do you expect changes in sources of uh, fish oil in the future? Uh, maybe I, I let you answer to this, uh, Mr. Kang. Would you like to answer this question? Do you expect, somebody is asking if we expect changes in the sources, I suppose, uh, like uh, if like uh, is, is krill going to grow or uh, more from uh, trimmings or uh, or so on. Uh, the source means krill or like algae or in general. If you think that there's going to be a trend like uh, uh, krill, the krill share is going to grow or uh, or the, the the share which originates from uh, uh, like trimmings like uh, salmon and tuna is that going to grow like it has grown in the past years oh uh, yeah yeah right uh, so uh, basically our uh, principle is a uh, source uh, fos certified uh, fish uh, oil oil products so we also help uh, suppliers to have uh, FOS certified uh, if they are not FOS certified. So uh, the uh, krill and uh, salmon oil, that kind of things uh, we can consider. Uh, but uh, our company's uh, core um, competency is uh, high strength fish oil from fish. So actually, yeah, we, uh, source uh, crude oil or medium concentrate oil and uh, make uh, up concentrated and having high EPA and DHA. So high EPA, DHA having the uh, more health benefit than um, uh, normal fish oil. So that's our strength at the moment. Okay, so yes, there is a limit uh, of the growth uh, of some areas, uh, some sources because of the because of the um, uh, effectiveness of the finished product, I understand. So we have a question uh, about, uh, do you do an audit to be authorized to join the certification? Well, maybe I can uh, quickly answer to this. Uh, 
um, the friend of the sea audits are carried out uh, both at the fishery uh, or at the process end or at the processing plant uh, if uh, the origin is from uh, trimmings and uh, all through the production chain so of course yes there are audits uh, basically basically yearly audits with surveillances and these are carried out by independent uh, certification bodies which are themselves verified and accredited by the national accreditation body so in this sense we operate uh, just like iso standards and their certifications so another question is about uh, Omega-3 are sold only in pharmacies or freely also in department stores and supermarkets. Maybe you can answer this, Mr. Khan? Yeah, so uh, it depends on the country. But uh, as far as I know, in uh, Europe, everybody uh, can buy from uh, different uh, channels, like department stores or online stores or pharmacies. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> is the is the demographic uh, that uh, uh, purchases supplements the same demographic that uh, needs them? Uh, therefore, uh, have dietary deficiencies. Hmm. Maybe you want to answer this. It's not very clear to me, but I think uh, uh, if are those who buy the product uh, the actual ones who are, then consume it or or that uh, needs them uh, maybe maybe the the question is um do people sometimes buy them uh, without knowing that they would not need them or just because they they you know they've been uh, kind of uh, convinced that they need them uh, even though they don't have dietary dietary defic deficiencies so they might be there might be some people buy and they don't have deficiencies. I think that can happen. But have you, do you have any statistics about your consumers? Why do they buy them? Ah, uh, yeah. So uh, generally, uh, uh, people buy omega three products for uh, general well being uh, in uh, Europe, but uh, more uh, like uh, well educated. Uh, in terms of omega-3 so countries like uh, Norway they are taking it for heart health but uh, omega-3 actually good for heart health and the brain eye and um, uh, pregnant women but uh, here uh, important thing is uh, dosage so you need to take a proper dosage then how can you know you're taking whether uh, enough dosage or not, then the, you can check it with a uh, omega-3 index test. Okay. Thank you. So we have a, a question about uh, MSC. Uh, uh, speaking of Peru and sustainability, we are hearing rumors that Peru is moving towards an MSC certification. How does Friend of the Sea feel about that? Well, the, there are... Uh, several companies worldwide who are both friend of the sea and msc there's nothing i think uh, this is not a problem some uh, markets uh, might prefer to to as a claim to say that they are friends of the sea uh, some we feel that consumers probably can better perceive the meaning behind the claim if they if they see that the claim is to be friends of the sea uh, rather than being MSC, which uh, in some places is more known like a cruise line or something like that. So uh, we're not we're not concerned. We think this is part of the sustainable seafood movement. I started this uh, activity like 30 years ago and the word sustainability was not even known yet uh, at that time. And uh, many things have changed. Uh, companies have, have been uh, more aware of the issues, have started to select their origins. And, uh, and the Peru is obviously a very uh, sensible country uh, in regard to good, uh, proper uh, fishery management. 
So as they are targeting different uh, markets, it is quite normal that they are now moving to MSC certification. We have started working with Peruvian companies like uh, 10, 15 years ago. And we have recognized uh, 10 years ago the sustainability of their fishery. So we feel uh, that we, we have done a positive thing, uh, uh, logical uh, with the um, scientific evidence about the good management and uh, the sustainability of the fishery. So we're just glad that they are also uh, considering other uh, certifications. Is KD Pharma going to exhibit during next Vital Food Fair in Geneva? Yeah, yeah, sure. If it's not canceled, then uh, we will exhibit. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh -huh. So another, another, another question is about the liquid concept sounds like a big idea. Uh, this is from Mr. Soares from the United States. I think it would be great to have omega-3 infused beverages. Also, why don't we hear more about the importance of omega-3 index? Sounds like a way to drive demand. Maybe you can answer, Mr. Khan. Uh, yeah, yeah. So omega-3 index is a uh, very important uh, biomarker. And uh, it has also global map showing the where which area is deficient in terms of omega-3 index so in order to increase our omega-3 index uh, you need to take uh, a relatively high amount of epa dha but uh, it can it's a personalized uh, number but uh, let's say if you need to take a epa dha uh, 1500 milligram then uh, as i told you uh, you need to take uh, five capsules of uh, normal um, general fish oil or you can take a uh, high concentrated fish oil two capsules or easy easy way is uh, taking the liquid supplement liquid fish oil then the, with a uh, teaspoon a uh, five milliliter then you can achieve this uh, dosage so then the people worry about the bad smell of fish but uh, uh, KD Pharma Group has a, a factory in Norway, so we call it, uh, the, the name is KD Norway. So we have uh, 30 years of experience with uh, liquid uh, fish oil formula. So we have a really excellent taste and um, a reduced smell. So people uh, sometimes cannot believe it's a really fish oil. So we can provide that kind of a solution as well, liquid fish oil solution. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Kang. And uh, then we have a question uh, which goes, uh, uh, do you know which source of omega-3 is best absorbed by the body? From Mrs. Wiss. Do oh. you have an answer for that? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, there there are uh, several you know companies are telling uh, uh, our company's uh, fish oil product is better absorbed than uh, others. Yeah, but um, with the food, uh, it's almost same. So, if you take the fish oil supplement with the food with oily food, and it's a uh, uh, almost equally absorbed, but uh, without food, then uh, it's, uh, it can be different. So I recommend people uh, taking fish oil supplement with uh, daily meals, then it's okay. So uh, in, the, in the omega-3, so compliance is uh, more important than absorption, I think. People need to take it every day. Otherwise, it's uh, not uh, that effective. So yeah, it's good to uh, have a fish oil every day uh, with the meals. I recommend that. Okay. And then uh, what about algae-derived omega-3? Is this going to gain more share in coming years? Yeah, yeah. So algae-based uh, plant uh, 
omega-3 is getting a, a lot of popularity so especially in the Europe more and more consumers are going to uh, vegan and uh, a lot of uh, consumers are uh, claiming claiming that they are uh, flexitarian so <laughs> So it's a kind of major trend. Vegan is a really major trend. So uh, major omega-3 companies in Europe, they are looking into uh, this the vegan solutions from LG. Yeah. So as a new product, they want to launch them. Yeah. Okay. And um, do you think omega-3 use uh, will increase or uh, consumption will increase in the future? Oh yeah, so in uh, uh so I'm I'm based in Germany, so uh you know in Europe it's a con it's different from country to country. So for example, uh Germany and Austria, Switzerland, uh, the overall supplement uh, usage is decreasing because uh, of this uh, regional or organic movement and kind of a vegan uh, movement. But the UK or Italy, the consumption of supplements are continuously increasing. So it depends on the market. And uh, omega-3 is quite actually, it's a big category so in dietary supplement. So there are lapsed users. That means uh, they used to take the fish oil, but they stop it. But uh, uh, since a lot of people know omega-3 and omega-3 is benefit, so if the innovators, uh, they touch a little bit of consumer insights, then the, they can get uh, a lot of attentions. So in the UK or in Germany, yeah, a lot of the small startups, yeah, they're growing really fast. Yeah, they're selling Omega-3, so yeah. Okay. Um, another question for you. Um... Is asking um, are uh, private brands, uh, private label, I suppose clients uh, ask you uh, certified, asking you certified products. Uh, you are packing right for other distributors, and are they like your customers? Are they requesting you for product to be certified? Yeah. So these days, uh more and more customers they want to have FOS certified products so uh, the brand owner is a finished um, product seller to the consumers they need to sign the agreement with the uh, FOS the licensing agreement and uh, um, through the value chain all of the product uh, all of the companies should be FOS certified example for example packaging company and the uh, capsule soft shell manufacturing companies and the fish oil manufacturing companies and the fisheries. And the good thing for KD Pharma Group and the, our nutraceutical uh, brand is KD Nutra. So we have uh, this uh, medium concentrate uh, oil and the high concentrate oil, also uh, encapsulation facility and the packaging facility. So we can give turnkey or uh, FS uh, sustainable uh, product solution to the consumers. Uh, to the private label uh, brand as well, yeah. Um, is the supplement or products of KD Pharma Group uh, good for all type of ages? Ah, uh, yeah. So it can it can customize. We can customize. We can develop the product for uh, teenagers and the, or for pregnant women or for uh, the uh, the people over fifty. So people have a a different. Uh, uh, so different age group has a different needs of uh, EPA DHA, so we can customize that, and also we can add uh, other ingredients like CoQ10 or, yeah, a curcumin, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Now here we have a question for us. It's about uh, do algae oils uh, could they be friend of the sea or friend of the earth certified? The answer is yes. Uh, we have. Uh, uh seaweeds uh, and algae requirements for certification uh, available they're on the website and uh, and so uh, 
uh, the product uh, can potentially be either a friend of the sea or friend of the earth certified certified depending on the use of these uh, these oils some companies might prefer to use the friend of the earth logo others the friend of the sea so there's a question about uh, social accountability well i think i already highlighted the i already I already highlighted that uh, uh, Friend of the Sea from the start has social accountability requirements, uh, uh, both for fisheries and aquaculture. And uh, in the new version, uh, this uh, which is being released uh, this month, uh, which is already on the website, uh, in the new version of the requirements, uh, this part uh, uh, has been much uh, expanded and updated with additional requirements because I think we are all aware uh, that uh, this um, potential impact, uh, this social impact can uh, be very relevant in some fisheries. And so it has to be looked at by the auditors. So we don't want products to carry the Friend of the Sea logo and, uh, and uh, come from uh, producers who are not respecting the workers and so on. Um, <clears throat> Somebody is asking if you have plans to use uh, algae-based uh, ingredients to algae-based ingredients to make omega-3 fish oil. Presently, are you using? Uh, maybe you already answered. Maybe you can give me provide us with a short answer on this, Mr. Kang. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we have some product with the algae oil. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, do you know if consumers are more uh, men or women? Ah, uh, yeah, so the supplement, dietary supplement major purchasers are normally women, yeah. They buy for yeah, husband and the children, yeah. Okay. So, Mr. Kang, when you buy the crude fish oil, do you have a specific requirement about where the fishing ground is? Like the crude tuna fish oil from Indonesia? is in regards to the specific quality of the fish as the raw material that will affect the quality of the final end product oh yeah so uh first of all this uh fishery is fos certified or not is a uh, quite good criteria and uh, our qa team is uh, doing the audit to the facility so uh we are not uh, source the species which are uh, vulnerable so it's also based on the FOS standard so we are looking at the uh, species carefully and uh, yeah our QA uh, quality assurance team is uh, doing the paper audit and the actual audits yeah okay then somebody is asking us to send uh, information about the Peruvian market uh, because I missed uh, that part uh, during the call. So, of course, we will send uh, the video recording of the whole webinar. It will be available for free on the website. Uh, just a few final questions. Uh, uh, could you kindly advise some sources of scientific research that provides insight on variations to DHA, EPA needs for different age groups? uh yes yeah, so we i'm sure that between us we can provide this information right mr kang and you can send yeah. it at the end of the webinar yeah uh, somebody's asking if you joined certification recently or since several years like i suppose they asked about the friend of the sea oh uh, yeah yeah so katie farmer joined the friends of the sea since 2014 Oh, yeah, or, yeah, yeah, I think so, now. yeah. And, so, and then uh, there's uh, questions related. Uh, somebody has seen that on our website that we have conservation projects. Uh, uh, how, how do you see the involvement uh, of uh, companies like yours? Uh, um, I, actually, I often talk about this uh, when I at different conferences where I talk about friend of the sea about the in general the approach of the market and I see a trend there where companies 
you know, uh, are uh, the more uh, dynamic companies like yours are uh, mm, doing something even more than uh, um, making it their uh, uh, production process sustainable, both in terms of sourcing as well as reducing waste and so on. But they become uh, more active uh, uh, with the local communities, in support of local communities. We have seen this a lot, for example, in uh, Peru and in Chile, with uh, companies actually supporting the local communities uh, with uh, um, you know, uh, learning opportunities, awareness, and also, in some cases, uh, uh, supplying uh, food for free to the local communities with people in need and uh, and also we see that uh, more and more companies try to be uh, proactive in uh, conservation so not just uh, doing their own job uh, positively but uh, dedicating part of their uh, margin to conservation initiatives maybe related uh, to the areas they work on you want some to add something about this do you think this trend is uh, and what about your company uh yeah so i think um more and more companies are uh more proactive to sustainability so that means uh, uh sustainability can be a, a competitive advantage in some way so for example as uh paolo mentioned um uh, if yeah. the company is uh, directly uh, helping the communities in the fishing area and the helping the uh, helping them in the social aspects, social accountability or uh, social sustainability, and uh, it's a uh, uh, it can be very good uh, marketing initiative or sustainability initiative. Uh, but uh, sometimes it's very difficult. So uh, FOS launched this uh, conservation project. And uh, KD Pharma Group uh, donated uh, money to uh, save the penguin project, actually. Yeah, so uh, we believe this kind of a conservation project is uh, really interesting. And uh, a lot of uh, brand owners um, can uh, also promote it to the consumers. And uh, they can do the project with the FOS together and uh, uh, more proactively. Yeah. Well, thank you very much uh, for the penguins and uh, for... Uh... Uh, joining the webinar for being our guest. Uh, I, I, we never had a, a webinar with so many questions, so I think this shows that there was a very high level of interest. I hope all the people here are, are satisfied about the answers we provided, and some of them we receive uh, additional information uh, uh, separately. Um, so we need to stop the webinar here. It's almost uh, been one hour. And um, all the information will be sent to all the participants. Thank you again, Mr. Kang, and uh, see you all soon uh, to the next webinar. I remember, I remind you on the 26th of February about whale and dolphin watching, which is one of the certifications initiatives of uh, Friend of the Sea. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kang. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Paolo Bray. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Have a nice rest of the day. Thank you very much, everybody.